Is it like surreal to be holding this? Yeah, I mean, this idea came to me in like eight years ago. It was a whole journey through quantum computing to get to this point. It's really the first step for this new paradigm of computing that we think is going to change the world. Ever since I was a child, I wanted to understand the universe around us because I wanted to figure out what technologies I could build that were going to have maximal impact in our ability to scale civilization to the stars. And if you study the equations of thermodynamics, there's actually a, a bias of the universe that pushes us to want to grow. And I think it's kind of nature's way of like urging us to expand. I was, I think, 24 or so. I was just immersed in theoretical physics, information theory, trying to view the whole universe as a big simulation. If you're trying to embed physics into computation, it's very natural for you to embed AI into the physics of the world. So Trevor and I came from quantum computing. We pioneered how to do AI on quantum computers in terms of software and a bit of hardware. Um, and what we realized was that noise was really the bane of our existence in quantum computing. And it's actually also a problem if you try to go low power with digital computers. And so what these devices do, they use the noise from heat, the jitteriness of the electrons as an asset rather than a liability. When I first learned machine learning with a background in physics, I just inhaled all this content and it felt like an idea was being beamed from space. And I was just like, the conduit for this idea. It was so powerful, you know, to have a physical system that does machine learning as physics. I thought I'd lost my mind and I tried to discredit the idea, take it down for six years, but I couldn't, right? I couldn't convince myself that it wouldn't work. Digital computers usually represent values in bits. And so it's a completely different way of programming. And we think it's really how nature computes. It's closer to how our brains compute. And it's a way to do AI much more power efficiently and actually much faster than, than current day hardware. As circuits get smaller, voltage noise will start to become omnipresent and affect the classical computation in normal CPUs. We're trying to use this noise to drive the computation, and that's what we call thermodynamic computing. These chips in particular, they don't even use transistors, and they're not encoding data in zeros and ones. They're actually continuous variables, and they're fuzzy values over this continuous variable. So you could think of like a point cloud, and I try to shape it in the shape of my data. And that process is basically machine learning uh, as a physical process. If you have a parameterized physical device, you can just optimize over the space of those parameters and let that optimizer program for you in a sense. You just give it a task and it optimizes itself to accomplish that task. So it's the differentiable programming mindset. Andre Carpathy calls it software 2.0. Right? The thesis is that gradient descent is a better programmer than you. So we're here uh, in Sherbrooke, Canada. This is our fab. This first chip is actually a superconducting chip, which is hard to manufacture at scale, but for us, it's kind of a Tesla Roadster in the sense that it, it's the most efficient neural information processing unit you could create. And it's gonna open people's minds about the performance that we computing can unlock. And so what we're gonna see today is how we manufacture a very key component of these devices called uh, Josephson junctions, which are kind of like our transistor, for superconductors. They're, they're a really important component and they're the hardest one to manufacture. Uh, this is where we do our fabrication and we're gonna do a deposition today of uh, Josephson junctions. So we did the exposure of electron beam resists uh, recently, developed it, uh, and now uh, we're ready to do the deposition. So this is our uh, deposition uh, tool. Uh, it's from uh, Angstrom Engineering, and we're doing a uh, deposition in the evaporation chamber. So what will happen is the, the robotic arm will move the, the chip into the evaporation chamber, followed by uh, oxidation in the oxidation chamber, and then we're uh, evaporating again. And this makes sure that we have this superconducting layer, uh, insulating layer, and then superconducting layer uh, on top. And here, our very first prototype chips use uh, superconducting metals and have programmable physics of electrons in these metals that allow us to do essentially generative AI as a physical process. 
It's gonna be a lot of screws. We're using this refrigerator to cool down our sample uh, to 10 millikelvin so that it becomes superconducting. In order to get the effects that we want, we need superconductivity. This is for two reasons. One is dissipation, and the other is because we exploit a physical effect called the Josephson effect. And for that to happen, the aluminum needs to be superconducting. We're at 273 degrees Celsius below zero. So we're very close to absolute zero. And these cans are necessary to literally isolate stages from the other to prevent light from heating up these stages that are colder and colder. So just light on its own uh, will, will impact the material in the fridge. It's kind of a bit of a, a Russian doll system here. I think the physics of all of these circuits, whether it's quantum or thermodynamic, I mean, it's both in the end. I just find physics very interesting. And that's why I'm a physicist. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. That's beautiful. We just started getting our first data, finally got this whole setup uh, going. As you can see, it's quite involved, it's quite epic. For us, you know, this is an evolutionary fork away from uh, the previous paradigm uh, of quantum computing and, and, and towards uh, thermo. And so couldn't be more excited today to be holding this, really. Everything we learn on this platform will carry over to our, our next ones. It's going to open people's eyes about, you know, this potential paradigm of computing that's totally different. You know, the next big milestones are going to be to demonstrate similar principles uh, in silicon. And of course, open sourcing our software and, and getting people from throughout the world to start programming uh, simulated thermodynamic computers at first and eventually, you know, our real devices and for them to get to try them. Uh, and hopefully at that point, uh, we check back in. To me, I think the greatest pursuit is the expansion of scope and scale of intelligence throughout the universe. This technology we're building here is really a big step towards enabling that expansion, right? If you can get far more energy efficient computers that operate much faster by fundamentally running the AI algorithms differently in the devices using exotic physics, then you've completely changed the game. You can apply intelligence to really solve all the problems that perturb us and prevent us from being able to scale to the stars. I think it's really important that we don't just fight for our place in the dirt, but seek to grow in scope and scale and seek to the stars. Solving intelligence is solving a problem that will solve problems for us, right? And what we're seeking here is to solve for the ultimate embedding of intelligence into the physical world. We're operating at the very limits of physics here. This is what these devices demonstrate. They're as energy efficient as you can make intelligence for all we know. <laughs>